Hello, my name is Paul Christ from the University of Wisconsin. Today I'd like to talk about two topics. First one being thoughts that you might want to think about and, and, and uh, items to look at in creating a balanced offensive attack. And the second thing would be how we go about teaching our quarterback in the, in the passing game, installing a pass play, and uh, different things as far as how to practice pass plays. <laughs> First thing to talk about is balancing your offensive attack. And as you go, I think there's a couple questions that you need to, to ask and, and answer for yourself. And the first thing is put up here, what do you need to do to win? And, and by that I mean is who, who are you going to be as an offense? You know, what, what, what type of style are you going to have? What kind of defense do you have? What are you going to need to do uh, to win? The second thing is what fits your personnel? You know, what type of team do you have? Do you have a big lineman? Do you have small lineman? Do you have a great quarterback? You got an excellent running back? What type of receivers do you have? Anything that you need to do, I think you need to address what fits our personnel. The second th or the third thing is, do you have runs and passes to fit all necessary situations? Designing an offense, one thing that's really important is making sure that you've got enough plays that handle a third and short situation, enough plays in third and long. And I think what you need to do is look at your entire you know, season and say, okay, we're going to have 42 third medium calls. So it doesn't make any sense to have 20 different plays in that situation. And then third and long, if you've got another 45 plays and you've only got one. So you got to make sure you balance it so it fits in all your situations. And the last thing is, do you have the knowledge and the time needed to teach it? You've got to be able to teach it to your players so they can, in the end, execute. The second thing I think is important when looking at it and, and talking about balance, you've talked about the top here, run and pass balance. You know, for us, for example, Wisconsin, we want to be, ideally, we're going to be 60% run, 40% pass. Now, in the past, what we've ended up being is probably about 50-50. This last year, we were 200 yards rushing, 200 yards passing. Now, it all depends. For us, if we're winning games, we're running the ball in the fourth quarter, we're going to get more run attempts. So it kind of depends on what type of team you have as far as whether you'll be balanced. So, Balanced by run and pass, and I think also balanced by personnel and formation. You know, if you've used two tight ends, two receivers, and one back, which has been a, a pretty good personnel group for us, you want to make sure that when that grouping is on the field, you've got a balance of being able to run the ball and throw the ball. I think it's really important that make the defense have to defend as much of the field as possible. By that I mean is when you come up and line up in a formation, can you throw the ball effectively and run the ball effectively out of that formation. And the last thing is the ability to run complementary plays. And we call that packaging. We're going to go through a formation that's going to be with uh, two receivers, or personnel group of two receivers, two tight ends and a back. And, and this is examples by being balanced in the formation. First one here is an inside run, weak or into the boundary. So as you'll see on the screen right here, we've got two tight ends. So it's really a trips to the field. There are two receivers to the field, tight end of the field, tight end of the boundary. So we want to make sure that we've got an inside play that goes weak or to the boundary. All right, so that's just an example right here of our inside zone going to the weak side. And then we want to be able to run the same play inside zone to the field. So now we're going to the two receivers to the three receiver surface. So we're attacking it weak or into the boundary and attacking it strong to the field. And for us, this is just our inside zone scheme. A lot of you people are familiar with it. Just working the combination. Now here we're actually going blocking out. So these two are going to work the defensive end and what we call the Sam linebacker. The guard and tackle are going to work the inside stack. The backside guard and tackle will work the backside three technique and linebacker and the backside tight end on the end right here, leaving this safety or cornerback on the backside. So attacking with an inside run strong, an inside run weak. And now this is an option a lot of people are doing 
right now that it's actually when we call it it's an inside run with the option if you've got an optimal look on the edge just so a quick little bubble screen so the the linemen in the back they're all prepared to run the run the quarterback makes the decision if he gets a good look this receiver will block the most dangerous man and will throw a one-step bubble route to the inside receiver then the same thing again we talked about now going strong and going weak with the running game having a run pass option off of it now we're going to talk about taking an outside play to the boundary again what I talked about earlier or mentioned is you want to be able to make sure that you're able to attack the field the whole field right here so this is just our outside pin pull play tight ends block in the end you know depending on the fronts and what we're getting get two pullers leading it and attacking into the boundary or in this formation running it weak again depending on we'll get one puller out of the guard or the tackle depends on the shade of the the defensive tackle right here tight end is blocked up or manned up on the end right here so in this case tight ends on the end tackles coming down on the three technique bringing our guard and our center around and, and obviously backside cutoff blocks on the on the back side of the play so there's an outside run to the boundary and this coming up here is an example of an outside run to the field again the whole purpose is one formation being able to attack the whole field making the defense defend with one formation defending the boundary inside weak inside strong and now up here a perimeter play this right here is going to be just a full pure zone or pure stretch play right there so again I think in the running game if you can have the ability to attack on all flanks right there and then we'll get to the passing game I think that's the best way what you need to look at in trying to be balanced so here's an example right now the line is really it's a it's a naked type of a scheme faking a, a run to the left and now we're taking our back and we're just creating a little bit of a flood principle so again a, a play action so if we've been doing a good job of running the ball weak or into the boundary right there just coming off or countering off of it with a little naked action we'll also do this with re releasing this tight end to get a third receiver we're really just trying to create any type of a flood pattern so again with a play action pass attacking to the field and this now is, is a little bit more of kind of we call it a, a attack or a guard pocket pass we're going to fake the inside zone strong and then the quarterback is going to set back up over the inside leg of the, of the backside guard that's the ideal spot for him so we're faking our inside zone obviously you don't get quite as much of a sell the tackles forced to really pass at the end depending on the fronts we'll get we're going to try to create some double team help with the inside guard center and guard and the tackle and tight end are going to work the combination on the back side but now this is just kind of a more of the other one was a harder run action this is a little bit more of a, a play action by the formation heavy run formation for us so now a play action off it. and again this is really kind of a form of a, a flood route or kind of clear this out just try to occupy these three defenders right there and then it's creating a high low with the tight end and the running back right here so again now being able to take a pa pass action and attack the field with it now same protection same same mindset or concept but now we want to take the the intent of the route and it's working more to the boundary so right here we're going to take the tight end he's going to run a corner route bring the slot receiver over and then follow it with a dig and then just creating a high load so if the linebackers are dropping we can just replace it with the back if they come up because of the action or the back draws them up then you throw behind it so again taking where you can attack the field and now something that's really attacking more the boundary of the middle of the field so again trying to find balance attack try to find where where you on a balance attack try to find where you can attack are we hitting all the spots of the defense so again pretty good play action the one on this this action right here the the the, the left tackle is the one that's stressed most he's got the one-on-one -on -one block the tailback on this protection because of that he will come and he'll chip the re responsible for releasing through the B gap so he knows that he's got some help to the B gap the guard if he was soloed up 
He's got help to the big gap. I think that's one thing that's real important when looking at any type of pass protection is am I getting help, and if I'm getting help, where is that help coming from? So right here is a good example. Though if you've got a pretty good tackle, he's one-on-one -on -one right there with a possible help from a back. You get a form of a double team. When this is against a four-man rush form of a double team right there. You can see his eyes are still outside, so he's got some form of help right here. The, the uncovered tackle right here, he's going to try to give double help. Help on the guard, and then be also come back and help on the tight end. So it's a pretty safe protection overall versus a four-man rush. I think another thing that's important when looking at a, having a balanced attack, and especially in the passing game, is where is your quarterback setting up? You want to make sure we, the first one we showed you was kind of a naked where he's breaking contain. Then we've got some action passes where he's going to set up on the backside leg of the guard. This right here is what we call a half roll or a tackle pocket pass. It's a full turn protection. Tight end is on the end. The line is going to take the three down lineman, the mic, and the will and the back is going to fit off in essence he's got the Sam linebacker or anything off the edge right there so this is just a, a half roll or a tackle pocket right there changing up the launch point of the quarterback and now we're just running like a little China concept to the front side and then just put an isolation route on the back side certain coverages give you that look then you can go ahead and, and, and take that right there this right here is an example of a sprint out pass that we're doing again the naked, we're getting them on the edge, but we're faking. This is somewhere we're just going right to it. I think the key coaching points right now for our Lions, we're just turning. We're going to protect our inside gap. The tailback's going to take the first defender outside the tight end right there and just work in a two-man combination with the backside over as we sprint out to the field. So again, creating balance with the run and the pass and also balancing how and where you're attacking it. And the last thing, and this is just one example of it, certainly we've all got a, a lot of different drop back schemes that you can use, but finding something within this formation. We've talked a lot about our run game and action passes off of it. Here's an example of just one drop back pass that we use, and there's a number of different concepts, whatever defenses you're seeing. Primarily, that's one thing to look at. You know, when you look at when you have one offensive formation, you need to know, especially the teams in your conference, the teams that you need to beat. What is their base defense? What are the coverages that, need to, that you need to beat with these, these pass patterns? What are the fronts, you know, the, the, the force patterns that you need to attack with your running game? So this example right here, just a, a drop back pass, just kind of creating a, a clear out and just creating an over under crossing concept right here. And, and one example of having a drop back. So I think just looking at things that you do, things that you do well and how you can fit it into your personnel and also into a formation and make sure the formation that you're using then can attack the whole field. Attack the field with a sideline to sideline and also vertical if possible. And that, that's a way I think that you, if you can look at it, then you can find yourself being balanced both in the number of times you're running the ball and passing the ball out of that formation and also balanced on where you're attacking. You know, like in basketball, they've got the, the shot chart. Where are the shots coming from? You should be able to take a look at your formations and see your own shot chart. And are we attacking the boundary weak? Are we attacking the, the outside the numbers to the field? Are we getting the ball, pushing it down the field vertically? Are we getting some things underneath it? Just make sure that you're attacking as many parts as possible right there. A lot of it is, is certainly driven with the, with the quarterback, but and I also want to give you some examples of how we go about it in practice and even set up our practice so that we're kind of creating the steps or the building blocks to hopefully do an efficient job of installing and teaching a passing play. So as we go, far, go through and install it, the first thing we do is we talk about it in the classroom. So in the classroom, we've got the playbook presentation. You know, a lot of people have different thoughts about playbooks. One is the coach just goes up, presents it, and the players write it down. We all know that if you write something down, you have a tendency to learn it, commit it to uh, memory a little bit faster. I think it's real important that your players take notes, whether they've got a, a starting point with, with a picture and they fill in the coaching details, or maybe you want to put a couple key points on it. However you want to set it up, but I think it's important to find a time in a classroom 
where you can teach the play. So that's the coach, all right, whether you're using overhead, whatever it may be, players in a book or notes, and you go through and you teach it. This is what we're trying to do with this play. Then I think it's important to show video clips. You know, any, if it's just one clip, but anything that they can see. So now they're hearing it, getting it from you, they're writing notes on it, and now they're visually seeing it. And then I think that it's important, especially if you've got time, I like having the player then teach it back to me or teach it back to the group. So you go through it, you give your, your explanation, this is what we're trying to do, this is the play, these are the key coaching points, and now see what that player retains, see if he can come back and teach it to the group. Then once we leave the, the classroom, we go to a walkthrough setting. Before we run, we're going to walk. So now a guy's got a feel for where is my split in the passing game? How is it going to look? Where in the end, where does everyone come out? So it kind of just gives them a visual, and then you go to the practice field. And the first thing we do is we run a, a we call it group patterns versus air. So we're just going to line up and see how everyone fits into the play. If you've got a crossing pattern, you know, see if the, the Y receiver knows that he's over the top of the X receiver. Understanding the split. So if we're going to be top of the numbers split for our single receiver, he sees the top of the numbers, he knows where he's at. So put him on the field and let them go through the play. Then I think in teaching the quarterback, we call them spot drills. Just an emphasis on the progression. A lot of our passes are progression where we're just going through. If number one's open, we throw it. If one's not open, find two. If he's there, throw it. If not, find three. That's an example of what I mean by progression. So with our spot drills, we're going to line up. And whether it's you know, your receivers, if it's managers, if it's the other quarterbacks, wherever it is, this is their final spot in the play, and the quarterback goes back. It's a good chance for him to work his footwork, understand the rhythm of the play, and also kind of where the, the spots are, the spacing of the pattern. It's a good way for him to, for you to be able to find out if he knows. If you say throw the ball to number one, he should know where number one is. The ball goes to another receiver, he doesn't quite have it yet. And then there's some things I'll talk about later that you can add in to make it a little bit more of a reactive type drill. Then the quarterback and receiver, not just the wide receiver, but any receiver, tight end, running back, then you just got to go versus the air and practice it. You got to understand and develop the timing, what type of ball we're going to get, what type of spacing, where is, that, where is the ball going to be expected as the, as the receiver comes out of his break. You need to practice that versus the air. Then you want to add a defender. So all we're going to do is we're going to add pieces to it. Now we're going to add, add a defender. So we're going one-on-one, -on -one, receivers versus cornerbacks, tight ends versus safeties, tight ends versus linebackers, running back versus linebacker, whatever it may be, because you've got to be able to do it. One thing that we teach our quarterbacks is that reading coverages is all about finding the one-on-one. -on -one. That's all you're trying to do is you don't necessarily have to know whether it was cover four or cover six or cover two, two man, zero, all those different things. In the end, you have to find a one-on-one. -on -one. And once you find that one-on-one, -on -one, you need to win with timing and location. So this is a great chance to work on timing and location. Then we're going to add all the components and we're going to do a group skelly. So it's the offense versus the defense with no pass rush. Great chance to get a picture of how it fits against various defenses and also for receivers to find out if it's a zone, where's the hole at, if it's man-to-man, -man, when do I need to run, what kind of depth do I need to get, et cetera, et cetera. Then what we'll do is we'll add just a half, half line. So if we've got a right tackle and a right guard going versus a left defensive end and left tackle. So now you're creating some semblance of a rush, some timing. The quarterback gets a little bit more distraction in his face, and yet you don't have all the problems of a team pass and, and potential for some injury. So that's another thing that we add to it, the half line skelly, and then we go with a team pass, 11 on 11, and then that mixing in the blitz situations. So as we go through it right here and, and, and go in the meeting room, our playbook presentation would be something like this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the play. So the one I'm using for example here is what we call drive bullet. Whatever that play is, this is the play, guys. The formation we're doing it out of right here is bunch, the protection, and the drop. So kind of the initial information given to them. Then the next thing we go to is here's the picture. This is that play. So we talk about drive bullet. This is the play that that we're running. This is what the X is doing, the tailback, the F, the Y, and the Z. So go through it, make sure they understand the spacing. Coaching points right here, the X, you're going to be top of the numbers, minus two. All right. Our bunch, which is a normal split for us, so they've got their split rules, but our normal bunch is four yards split from the point man, the tight end right here from the tackle, and then it's two yards 
with either one, the inside and the outside receiver of it. Then we go through and, and, and teach it. So if you're teaching the whole group, all right, X receivers, there's your split, numbers minus two, your route is a seam, inside release seam right there. So key coaching point, inside release landmark, halfway between the hash and the numbers. I think it's important if, as often as you can is give landmarks, especially on any type of vertical routes, any field markings that can help a player understand where he fits into it, I think is helpful. You go on and so on, so on and so forth. The tight end, his split, his route, and any coaching point that may be pertinent to this play. Then you go to your quarterback, and you have a, a progression, okay? First of all, it's a six-man protection, or a five-man protection for us. So now you have to understand who are your hot receivers. Before anything else, you've got to understand the protection and how they get out of it if there's trouble coming with pressure. And then you're going through your progression. From this play right here, the one is the Z on the shallow cross. Two is your tight end on the dig, and three is your fullback running a little bit of a swirl. The other thing that we talk a lot about is every time that we run a play, we, we have an intent. We're trying to run all these different, everyone's got a purpose in this, and that's to try to pry open a certain receiver. Now, we all know that there's different coverages where that receiver's not going to be very good, and that's what you have to teach and for, other guys, for all the guys to understand that just because your intent doesn't mean you're going to get the ball all the time. But on certain coverages, this is how we're going to try to manipulate the, the defenders so we can throw the ball to a certain guy. And then you go into your, your key coaching points. I think you've got to be careful about giving too many coaching points and make sure that it's one, two things that they can understand that they can take with them. And in this one right here is you have to identify who the weak side flat defender is and does the wheel route or the tailback pull him? If he can answer that, I think he's got a great chance of having success with this play. And I think it also depends on where he's going. When we have a young quarterback, the number one thing I'll tell him is when we call a play, if you're going to miss or make a decision on throwing to someone, make sure you're throwing to the intent. Now, there's some times, like I said before, where the intent isn't the best throw, but at least I know a young quarterback's throwing at the intent he understands what we're trying to get done with the play, and then he'll learn, okay, versus this coverage, or if the defender does this, then it's not as good. I need to go through my progression. So I think the first thing is understanding the intent, what you're trying to get done with the play. That's why we talk a lot about it. Make sure everyone knows. I think it's, you know, a lot of people have a different difference of opinions. You know, do you go through and you teach the receivers what to do and let them all think that they're a viable option in it, and then just talk about the reads with the quarterbacks, we go about it a little bit different. We want everyone to understand what we're trying to do. You know, everyone in, in the end is going to need to know that we're trying to get one guy open on something, but everyone has a chance to get the ball. On this play right here, you know, we've had everyone catch a ball on it. Certainly we've had more catches to the guys in the progression, the Z and the tight end right here, but everyone's had and I think everyone needs to understand what they're trying to do in the play. So we don't have a lot of secrets right there. We want everyone to understand it. We'd like everyone, if we're going through it and we've got some of our veteran guys, Everyone should be able to say, if we say drive bullet, everyone should tell us who the intent is right there. And the quarterbacks, this is the key coaching point for this play. So I think just a couple nuggets that you can give them goes a long ways. Then in the classroom again, so we, first thing in the classroom is playbook presentation. Then you want to show them some clips of it. So this right here, motioning down to our bunch set. And all we're trying to do right now is we're going through it and, and you just talk about it and, and it's nice if you have a number of different clips versus a number of different defensive coverages so that you can really see through it. But right here, we want to identify, first thing for the quarterback, who is the flat defender? Well, they're rolling the coverage weak right there. So in essence, the corner ends up being your flat defender. He's going out, all right? In this case right there, because he's here, that linebacker can stay ahead of the intent, the shallow cross. So this is a good job by our quarterback. He's off of this right here, now coming back to the second option. If the second option's open, he throws it. Here's another example of it. So as he's just going through it, if he just was going through the numbers, if number one is open, throw it. If number one's not open, like the last picture we saw, then he comes back through it and just go through your progression. Now he's got to, once he gets, so if a young quarterback, that's where he's going to start. If number one's open, throw it. Then he starts to realize how the play fits into different coverages, 
And then he can start to use the coverage or the defensive clues to help him right here. So the flat defender, all right, is the cornerback staying on top of this right there. Linebacker, instead of being ahead of it, all right, is dropping underneath it so that it opens up the Z receiver, he can throw the ball. And I think there's a fine line that you got to go through, and that's reading defenses and understanding what they're giving you, but also just taking it, come back. If number one is open, you throw it. If he's not open, go to your next point of your progression. Then I like to do, if you, especially if we don't have a lot of concepts or a lot of pictures of that play, we'll try to take similar concepts so they can understand. So this right here starts out in the same bunch formation, but now we're motioning and really just exchanging parts. All right, instead of the tailback being the wheel route right here, our tight end is going to be the wheel runner and the back will end up replacing. He's, he gets caught up in protection here, but he'd end up being the third man and just trying to form a little bit of a triangle read right here. So just try to take the same play, same concept. So even though it's different people, it's a different play, our quarterback and our players can get an idea of when this is a, a good play. Why, the tight end right here can understand. If they've got outside leverage, this is how I run this type of route. So I think if you can marry it in and, and in teaching a play, if it's not identical, if you find something that's very similar, then I think it'll be very helpful. You may have run this play 15 times but not had it versus coverage. So here's one we want to teach. You know, in cover three, we're going to have a chance to maybe take the seam or the wheel route right there, you can make that point, even if the ball didn't go here. We get pressure, so the quarterback ends up going right now to our tight end, but you can kind of make those coaching points. Anything that you need to do to help them understand the play is invaluable. The last one right here, you can see a picture. It's also pretty good to kind of help sell the play to everyone. So now you got a chance to run up the seam. If he sees that, he could throw that, or he just comes through with his progression. I think it's really important if you can get them to teach back to you. It's a great, it's great if you've got an older core, if you've got a senior core, if you're in high school, you've got a senior quarterback, and you want to have the freshman quarterback start to understand, make your senior teach it back to them. You can find out as a coach what that quarterback knows or that senior knows. You can also hear what he thinks are important parts or components to the play. So I think it's an invaluable teaching tool for a coach to hear your players teach it back. Now when we get on the field, the first thing we're going to do is the patterns versus air. So a lot of times this is before practice gets going right there. We're going to line up in the formation, just get everyone. You, can, you find out if guys got a good picture of it. Right here might be a little bit too, we're too wide in our split. We want to take that and be two yards inside. So you can make that point. He lines up here, great chance to make that coaching point, bring him in right there. Everyone gets to understand the quarterbacks, kind of see how the play fits in, you as a coach can see, do you like the spacing? Do we have the right spacing that, you, that is needed right there? Any key coaching points you want to make for each position, great chance to do it. So patterns versus there is how we'll start every one of our, our practices and, and kind of go with and make sure. Now you go to the quarterback, and this is the spot drill. So we're just taking, this is the wheel route by the tailback. This is the shallow cross by our Z receiver. This is our X receiver running the seam. Just put them into their spots, quarterback comes back, gets a feel for the timing of it. If it's a five step drop, a seven step drop, if he should hitch with it, whatever the key coaching points are, this is how you want to go by it. It's a great way to teach. Again, this is all pre-practice. Quarterbacks can still be throwing the ball kind of loosely and getting their arms warmed up, but instead of just playing catch back and forth to each other, get some guys, put them in their spots and, and, and help them learn the plays. The other thing you can do on this, once you get going, you can add one defender. You can just put yourself out here or have, a, have an outside linebacker. He runs with the wheel route, you throw the ball here. If he doesn't run with the wheel route, then you can take the wheel and, and throw it. So whatever, if you're working a curl flat, if you're isolating one defender, if he drops underneath the curl, you're going to throw the flat. Then I think once they understand the spots, understand the progression, then you can give them one type of read and kind of keep, keep learning the play as you go along. Then we're going to get together, once we're in practice now, getting together, timing up with the receiver. So this is an example of our wide receiver. Quarterback coming back, taking his drop, and he's getting an idea of just where it fits. Big thing that we talk about on the crossing route. And a lot of times you've got the umpire stepping up inside here, but we've got to make sure that 
They've got to clear and see all the traffic. A lot of times guys will run shallow crossing routes and they'll want to look at the quarterback before they cross the ball. And this is a good place to understand when am I going to get the ball? You know, you're not going to get that ball until you get back to the ghost tight end or where a tight end would be on the boundary side. So this is a good example right there. And it's a great chance for us to see. Is he looking at the quarterback too soon? Or is he getting his eyes running through all the traffic and then getting his eyes ready when the ball's coming? So that's why I think it's invaluable just patterns, just running receivers versus air. And there's times when we can't beat the air. And if we can't beat the air, we're not ready to go against the defense. You've got to run this. This is what you've got to do in your off time, your off season, your summer programs, your winter workouts. These guys have to be able to take your base routes and be able to run them with timing, all right, with precision against the air. So that's just, and now you add a defender. So now we're just going to start adding components to it. So now we're just taking a defender. Quarterback's got to come back, throw it on rhythm. And now depending on where that defender is, defender's over the top of him, he can lead him. All right. If the defender was man-to-man -man playing underneath it, low hip right there, now the location has to change. Now he's got to put that ball a little bit higher because the defender's low. So whatever it is, it's just a great chance to work. It gives the receiver some confidence, makes the quarterback. He's got to throw. His job is to find a one-on-one. -on -one. So there's nothing but a one-on-one -on -one right here. And now it gives him a chance to win All right, and throw different locations on good timing to get better at that route. Now we're going to add and put into a skelly pass. So we've got seven, seven, on, seven defenders on defense right here. And whatever our protection is, releasing all our eligible receivers. A lot of times our defense will zone blitz still and, and work their zone drops. So they'll sometimes add a defensive end or a defensive tackle. But we're going everyone minus the offensive line. And everyone, a lot of people do this right here. But it's a chance just for the quarterback without any disruption from the line or any any pass rush problems, he can now work and see how this play fits in versus different coverages. So here's an example right there, finding the flat defender, the flat defender gets hung up, then he can throw what we call an alert. Otherwise he's working his progression one to two to three right there. So again, just building blocks, different components to how we teach our pass patterns. And I think it's important then you set up your practice accordingly. You wouldn't want to go start practice with a skelly and then go back in the middle of practice and work your quarterback and receiver versus the air or work your one-on-one. -on -one. So if you can set up your practice accordingly, we do the same thing with our passing game and with our running game so that you have building blocks in your practice. Then we talked about the half-line skelly. And the thing I like about the half-line skelly, so really you've got, you know, the defense is, depending on who's live, you can see right here, the, the defensive ends aren't live, we've got a center in our two guards right there. We'll always have a center in here. So the rotation and how we work this is we'll start in our right tackle and our right guard will be going the center. We'll be snapping the ball. So it's the left defense tackle, left defensive end. We'll two snaps with the right side right there. Then we'll go one snap with the guard center guard. And then we'll come back and bring the left tackle in. Right guard will go out and we'll go left guard and left tackle for two snaps. Now the thing we don't worry about, whatever the pass play is called, We'll run that. You don't have to worry about matching up your protections with certain guys. We do call protection, so if it's a slide protection, they will slide it right here. There's times when that creates a guy that's coming open right, you know, off of, off of it, or we're creating a double team. And that's just kind of, we're going to roll with it right there. We want it all to match up. But what it gives the quarterback is a sense of timing without having a problem. So he's got some people kind of, the, the pockets collapsing back in him. It's not as comfortable it was in the skelly, all right? But he still has a rhythm. It's a great chance if a guy comes clean where he's got to make a quick movement, step, and just makes it a little bit more realistic. I think another value to this, especially with a lot of high school programs, is when you've got players going both ways. If you've got a player that's a, you know, your best offensive tackle, but he's also a defensive tackle, when he's on the right side, he can be taking his offensive snaps, and now we work the left side for the offense. He can be the right defensive tackle, and he can work on, on his side there. So it's a chance to get a lot of work, like a team setting, a little bit less chance of injury. You don't have people kind of running guys in the back of legs right there. Or if you want to get a few players, work on both sides. So it's a great chance to get a feel for it. You also get some hands up. So the quarterback has to not only throw around it, but he's got to throw through arms, bodies. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a great way to, 
to add another piece to it and get a feel for the quarterback as it's building to where he can get himself into right here a team pass situation. So really it's not, not anything, we're not reinventing the wheel right here, but we're just taking a, a good look at what is a good logical progression and how to teach. And how do you put your players in a position where they can kind of walk and then jog and then run and then go through it right there. So you're just adding building blocks, pieces on pieces, and to where now you get to where you're running in a, in a game situation. This is a little similar play, not the exact same play, but now it's 11 on 11. How does it fit into the, to the play? Where's everyone going? And, and you just keep coaching off of, off of that right there. But that's, that's how we go about practicing a passing game and it's just components of it. So hopefully there's a couple things that you can grab from that that maybe you can add to, to what you're doing currently and make yourself a little bit better teacher or make your players understand a little bit more. Last thing I want to talk about is just some drills and fundamentals that we do at the quarterback position. First thing is, is moving in the pocket. And this is a, it's a good, I think it's a, two times to use this. I think use it as a, a, a warm up and get yourself going or come back in the middle of practice when they're tired and use it. And all we've got is four bags right there. It doesn't matter if you use the bags, you can use towels. You know, if it's the off season, the quarterback can go and take some split logs and, and, and create this right there. And we're just trying to create movement in the pocket. All right, and as we're going right there, what we're trying to simulate, he's at the top of his drop. And now he's got to step to avoid a rusher coming up inside. He's got to step avoid, and now he's got to come back up into the pocket. And the other thing that's important we want to do is as you're going through it right here, make sure that there's always ball security within the pocket. You've got arms coming, all right, different things, you know, bodies getting around you. You've got to make sure you secure the ball. And also that you're at any moment, your feet are set. You're at the top of your drop, so now you should be ready to throw the ball. And even though you're moving, you always want to have the ability to throw that ball as quick as you can when you avoid the rush. The one thing I'd be a little bit conscious of here, as he's moving, he starts to kind of drop that ball a little bit. You still want to make sure that you're ready, but this is just sliding through, so that's why we're just kind of working through it, just stepping, avoiding again, and then breaking the pocket. We'll do some different things where you just slide up and, and, and release the ball, throwing it on rhythm, throwing it with your body out of position, or breaking out of the pocket. And are they getting an idea? Like right here with this quarterback, really don't feel like he's understanding. There's a big tackle coming to get you. You got to move like heck. You got to get out of the way and now come back into the pocket with safety. So you understand, make sure your players understand what you're trying to get done with the drill. So we're coming right here. Defender's coming up inside. I got to move, but I don't want to bail out of the pocket. Now I want to step back up inside. The other thing you can see right here, that back foot, is we're not really being as efficient. This quarterback here, is taking a step backwards to go forward. So it's a good chance for them to kind of work through it and get a feel for their body. And if anything, you tell them to slow it down until they're doing it right, and then they can slowly build up the tempo. And I don't think, it, you know, the one thing that's interesting talking to our quarterbacks, and, and they were saying that, you know, this right here, they first did it, said, you know, that's all we're thinking about is moving in the pocket. It's not realistic. And it's true to a point, but they also said, and I, th I believe this, that over the course of time, what you're trying to develop is a habit. A habit of moving in the pocket, all right, with efficient footwork, and also uh, and the chance to always be ready to be able to throw the ball whenever that receiver opens up. You might be moving to avoid some or, or moving to see it, and now you'll be able to cut it loose. So that's another thing as you're going through this drill, at any point, you can you as a coach or have a receiver put their hands up, clap, whatever it is, but I think it's better a visual than a, than a, a voice command of throw because their eyes should be downfield, any visual, hand goes up, they cut the, the ball loose. So that's, we'll, you, we'll get a lot out of this right here, and I think it's important that you go then back through it the other way. So now we're coming, defender's coming up here, I gotta step and avoid, and now get back inside. So now we're coming here, and then we're bailing out of the pocket. So this is something we'll do almost every day with the quarterbacks, all right? I think you just gotta be careful of making it too much and so that's why our big emphasis is when they're top of the drop, step and avoid, and like to see him really almost burst and get back inside right there. So there's some great coaching points. I think it's good to be able to, if you believe in a drill, film it so that you can show it to the players, so that you can coach it just like you would a play. If you just go through the drills, they really don't know other than what the other quarterback's doing. They don't know what they look like. So I think if you believe in it, 
take the time if you've got the luxury of being able to film it, go ahead and film it. The other thing that I think is important with your drills is that you want to make sure that your drills show up on tape or things that happen to your quarterbacks, you create a drill. So some of these things you know through experience or in, in, in the past that this is something that quarterbacks are going to do or whether you're teaching O-line or defense, whatever it is, this is, these are things that are necessary for them to succeed at their position on the football field. All right, and you know right now, we know that you're going to have to move within the pocket. So here's an example. You want to be able to see it. So he's just stepping, a little bit of pressure, just stepping, not bailing, keeping his eyes downfield. So you want to make sure that your drills show up on the film. And there are also some examples where I've had over the past where things that have happened on the field where you say, you know what, we need to create a drill that tries to mimic that. As realistic as you can make your drills, so now players are saying, show these clips. You know, I went back and showed them, this is why we're doing this drill. So when this thing happens right there, if you've got to step and move, all right, then you're ready for it. Here's a good example right there. All right, he's stepping and moving, but the first thing that's happening is his off hand, he's got one hand on the football. So that's a good thing. We're not there yet. We've got to keep going with this. You can find it all. Everything you do is you step up, all right, I've got to move so I can give myself a throw. And you go back from the end zone, you can see where the ball security isn't good. As they're going through the bags, you on the back side can go and just kind of chop and make sure that they've got some security. But as we go, we separate, our hand comes off the ball, all right, need to get better at that. But whatever those movements are, whatever those drills are, and for us, talking about moving in the pocket, if you see something that comes up, especially if it comes up a couple of times, then put yourself in it, put them in a drill. Here's an example of stepping up and then getting out of trouble, either stepping up and throwing it or stepping up and getting outside the pocket. You know, we did an interesting study as we we're going through and looking at it last year, so that have been 2009 season, of all of our passes, 25%, it's actually 26% of our passes involve some form of movement. You know, if you say 74% of them, quarterback was dropping back and it was like skeleton pass. He gets back to the top of his drop, he gets rid of the ball. So now you're talking about what can you do to make sure those other 26% that they've got a chance, all right? Now another thing is just a quick movement and throwing off of that. So a quick movement and being able to ready to throw. Whether the movement's up top, all right, where he's got to step up inside or whether you're coming underneath it, he's got to step like the last one. Whatever it is, you think it's, and it depends on what kind of quarterback you have, you know, what kind of offense that you have. But just know your offense, know your quarterback or quarterbacks, and what are they, or maybe things that they struggle with. It might be something if they're always throwing to their left or when they're moving to a certain, certain side, you want to make sure that you're addressing that in a, in a drill type situation. And then you want to make sure that your drill shows up on film. So right here again, we're just talking about a quick avoiding something, stepping and still being able to throw the ball. All right, and this is a good picture right here. Step and avoid, get the ball out right there. You know, but you as a coach, and I, I, I wondered, you know, if I'd have done this drill a little bit better, if I'd have created a little bit better, he's more comfortable in throwing this thing. Now all of a sudden, instead of just being a catch, with a receiver sliding, can we help that quarterback? So now this becomes a catch, and he runs it in for a touchdown. So I think you're always looking for ways that you can improve as a coach and ways that you can help your, your, your player, whatever position is, help him perform in all the different scenarios that come up in a, in a game of football. Another example of it, so I think this just reinforces it. You know, this quarterback, he lived this right there, so now we say, this is it right here, this is why we're doing it. I'll show him this exact same tape. We'll talk about this. This is why we're doing this drill right here. So now all of a sudden, he knows what this is like. You got a, you got a hand getting on the ball, he's got two hands on the ball. He's strong through it right there, keeps his poise, keeps his eyes downfield. You're able to get a big play out of it. Other thing I think that's great to do is if you've got an old quarterback that's been in your system, been a great player for you, if you've got a chance to study any type of professional, whoever is good at what you're doing, I think if you can grab a clip, you know, this is right here, a clip, we had some game film of the, of the Saints. So here's Drew Brees, you know, arguably won the Super Bowl best at what he did. Here's a picture of Drew stepping up into the pocket, keeping poised. Anything you can do, show them, whether it's guys in your conference, good players in your conference, whether it's good players you've had in the past, like I said, or whether it's any type of professional, whatever it is, players will learn if you show it to them. If this is what you want, this is what they, you expect, or not expect, but you hope that they can attain to, I think those are great 
teaching points right there. So we give them examples for whatever we can find. Then they're throwing in your drop. So as you're coming back and the protection breaks down, or they've got a free rusher coming because of the protection scheme you're using, you gotta be able to put them in that position, all right? We're coming here, you know, simul simulating the defender, hands up right there, trying to still retreat, all right? You can't get set and throw it and get as tall as you can. So you're still getting up and over this right here. So good example, again, a lot of times we do this during you know, different parts of the practice, special teams, where you're not running a lot of receivers, but the quarterbacks can keep working. And then you find, you know, this is where it applies. Or maybe you hadn't done this, and you saw the quarterback do it, say, you know what, we need a drill for it. But here is that drill coming to life in a game. And they'll buy into those drills. If they know that it's going to help them on game day, they will buy into those drills. So make sure that there's a clear understanding of what you're trying to get done with the drill. Be careful that it's not too much. One specific thing, this is what we're trying to get done with this drill, this is how we go about it. Show them a game clip before, then you'd like to show them a game clip afterwards of them doing it. This is one that I hadn't really done a lot of until recently, but it came up about six times this past season. Where we were getting, there's a lot of garbage around the quarterback's legs and you gotta be careful and, and certainly I think number one in your job as a coach, you, know, you wanna put them in drills, but you certainly gotta make sure that you're safe and you're not getting a guy injured in one of your drills. So we're a little bit kind of working through this right there, just trying to make it uncomfortable as much as anything, them knowing that there's something around their legs right there. And you can see how it kind of affects the younger quarterback right here, how it kind of affects his throw. If he just comes back and throws this with no disruption, he'll hit this thing 10 times out of 10. Now you got to add a little bit of component to it, a little bit uncomfortable, just try to push it whether it's there or on the hip, all right? But just put him in that position that they face number of times I said you know what we need a drill for it and here's an example of it right here so we're playing we're in the red zone got a chance you know tight end has a chance to win right there you got a defender on the legs all right or he's coming to your legs just put him with it not that that drill in itself you just do it one time that doesn't cure it but if you can create habits if you can create a focus downfield so anything around them doesn't matter that's what we're trying to get done with that particular drill right there Here's another example of it happening. Like I said, we had about eight or nine of these happen where all of a sudden now there's just enough of a little disruption, able to get the ball, but the ball's a little bit behind the receiver. The receiver doesn't make the adjustment and it's an incompletion. You know, so that's why I say, you know what? Maybe this, is, maybe this is the difference. Maybe this is how we can help make this player better and give him a situation, do it over the course of time that now he feels accustomed to it. So, you know, it's no different than practice and then he can perform better. That's what we're trying to get done. So we had the disruption from the back side, and now you just do the same thing and disrupt it from the front side. Just a little bit of a, a, a nuisance, a little pain in the butt, whatever it is, but these things happen. I mean, there it is right there. How can you mimic it? You know, if it comes up more than five, six, seven, eight, nine times, it's probably worthy of a drill. The end does a nice job of kind of running the hump right there. He knows something's coming right there. It's how he finishes, maybe it's how he finishes his, his follow through. He doesn't get a chance to follow through. I think, like I said, we did a study and, and you know, 75% of our throws, we're coming back, we're set, we're throwing the ball. But that other 25%, which is a pretty big chunk of uh, uh, reps right there, what are you doing to make them feel like they're prepared for that situation? Another thing that comes up and, and happens more, and it's uh, been, honestly been kind of working through different ways you, know, you don't want to just beat the heck out of the quarterback, but there's times when the quarterback is back and he knows he's going to get hit. And so we're just trying to simulate different ways. We've taken it where we just whack him, run a guy through so he gets a sense of coming, coming through right there. But there's more of these than we probably would like, but I think it's a real part of it. And every place I've been and every type of offense, doesn't matter if you've got a great offensive line, not as good an offensive line, you just got to have to, there's times when the quarterback's going to have to stand in the pocket throw the ball knowing he's going to get hit. So we want to just come up with a couple different ways where we kind of create that, simulate that right there. Certainly don't want to be trying to injure him. Got to be careful that the, we stay out of the way so we're not going to get in the way of the arm or, or anything that happened injury-wise. But you give them a feel that you know there's times when you're going to have to stand in the pocket and make that throw. Another thing coming right there, just kind of whack him, give him a little something in the gut right here so he gets a sense that you know what, I still got, it doesn't matter what's happening around me, again, creating that nuisance, all right, it's going to happen, because here's the game clips, and this is what you want to say is, 
You know, am I putting guys in situations? Can we work it? He knows there's a free rusher coming right there. He knows he's going to take a hit, but he's got to stay there. It doesn't always have to involve contact, but they've got to get a sense of this. And if you don't put them in it, I think it's sometimes hard for quarterbacks just to assume that they're going to get that done. Here's a good picture from the end zone, though. You know, it doesn't really take a vicious hit right there, but he knows. He knows that he's clean. He knows he's got to stay in there. Again, how do you create drills that mimic the game and right now just try and create a little bit of a nuisance or knowing that something's going to happen but keeping the focus on the task at hand. And one last clip of it right here. Again, not ideal. Don't do what we want to do in protection. Knowing he's going to get hit but standing in there and being able to make that throw. Now we don't want to be taking our quarterbacks and putting them on the ground but we do want to try to create some type of drill situation that can simulate that so that he can then feel like he's at least been put through it and creating habits, no matter what the distraction is, that he's coming down, that he's able to, to, to accomplish the pass right there. So those are just some thoughts that I had and, and would like to share with you today on how we go about one, creating what we'd like to think is a balanced offense or things that you need to look at and, and how it fits your, your offense on how to balance your attack, whether it's with the run pass and also how you attack the whole field with those runs and passes. And also hopefully share some insight on how we go about installing and putting in a pass package or pass play and also how we practice. So hopefully there's some things in that you're able to get, uh, take advantage of and, and it could help you along the way. Thank you. Thank you.